Somebody know it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. What a great opportunity the Lord has given us. 2,000 years ago when he hung on the cross for us. It was an opportunity that was alive then and still is alive today. That's right. Because we serve a God that changes not, the Bible right. says. He's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's good to see some new faces. Amen. It's great to have David and Dawn here today. Amen. Good to see Megan in the church today. Amen. And her mother Angie and brother Jeff and Becky back there. Amen. 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 Uh, Angie, we wish you a happy birthday just before you walked in today. <laughs> we didn't forget what's happening this week. Amen. Amen. Happy Resurrection Day. Amen. Amen. You know, I like a lot of things that Brother Cook said this morning. Maybe some have never heard the audible voice of God before, but I have. I may not have been there on that Resurrection Sunday right. that the Bible talks about, but I am a living proof and witness that I have been resurrected yeah. from the life that I lived and the life that I live now. Amen. He is alive, Amen. and I'm thankful for that. Yes. And I have seen resurrection in this church. Amen. I've seen it in my brothers. I've seen it in my sisters. Amen. That he is a transforming God. Yes. Amen. His word is true. It's infallible. Amen. It cannot be proven wrong. Right. Amen. For the last two years that we've had Easter Sunday I've preached messages that God had laid on my heart to preach and they weren't about the resurrection but I preached what he wanted preached Amen. but this week he talked to me about the resurrection yeah, yeah. about the power Amen. That's in the resurrection and what it means for us today. Amen. Amen. Because he is alive, we have laid hands on the dead and they have risen. Amen. We have laid hands on the comatose and they have woke up. Amen. Speaking in another tongue. Amen. I witnessed it. I have seen people lay hands on tumors. And disappeared right before our eyes. Amen. I've seen diabetes healed at 25 years. Amen. I've seen incurable diseases healed. Amen. I've seen leukemia healed. Amen. I've seen God let me into a hospital before where I wasn't allowed to go in, but He hid me. He hid me from the people that wanted to check me out before I got in there. Because God knew that I wasn't supposed to be in there. But he made a way for me to get into these hospitals. Amen. So much so that the patients and even the people that were family to them said, How did you get in here? You're not allowed in here. They didn't believe that I was there. God put them to sleep while I was there and laid hands on the sick. He put them to sleep so they wouldn't even know that I was there. When God assigns us a mission, yes. you don't got to worry about what door is going to open. Right. You don't got to worry about how is he going to do it. You just go forth. Amen. Because he has risen, he has given us that power and authority to do his work. Amen. Those disciples aren't here anymore, but he has made disciples of all nations. That's right. We're his hands and his feet, per se. He's given us power and authority over demons and sickness and death. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. He's good. He's a living God. Amen. He's just not God. He's a living God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Melody for the tie that she gave me for Easter. Amen. I thank you for that. I love ties. Hint, hint, anyway. <laughs> I've had many give me ties, and I'll wear them proud. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Sister Lynette uh, for a gift. Uh, what it's all about today here on this reef, it says he is risen. Amen. And, uh, she bought that for us here. Amen. I thank you, Lynette, yeah. for that. I thank you for all of you that are here today. Amen. Amen. I thank you for Gabby being here today also. Amen. Uh, she's been here a couple of weeks in a row, and uh, God is working. Amen. We don't have to see it to know. I just know that I know he's working. Amen. Amen. All right. God is good. Amen. 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 Let's all stand here for just a minute uh, while we go ahead and uh, and pray. You know, you can never pray enough. I've said before that every answer to prayer has a genealogy. And if you were to trace that genealogy back to its birth, it was because of a prayer. That somebody prayed that made it come to fruition. Amen? That's the truth. It's been like that in my life and others that I know of. And I can testify and witness to that. Let's bow our heads and just thank God for today. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, we're gathered here in your house yes. today yes. to celebrate the victory yes. over death, hell, and the yes. grave. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. May this church, may this city, Lord, this county, this state, those in our country and all nations abroad receive as believers this message today. May the world recognize it, acknowledge it, and receive it. Lord, I thank you today for Calvary. I thank you for the death, the burial, and the resurrection. I thank you for the very dress that you've given me today, God. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. Yes. We're not worthy to receive it, God, but you're a merciful God. Yes. I thank you for the resurrection, Lord. Have your way today, God. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. You know, I usually preach for about 20, 25 minutes. It's been a little longer this morning. And today, I couldn't stop writing. Uh, even this morning, I was still writing some things down. I'll try to be quick and go through it so that we can go down in fellowship and enjoy uh, our Easter dinner today here. Amen. 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 Christianity rises and falls on the resurrection story. If Christ is not resurrected on the third day, then our faith and our belief is a big hoax. It's an absolute fraud. If Jesus don't rise again on the third day, then our songs and our sermons are delusional. Right, right. If he's not risen then our cathedrals and our churches and our tabernacles are nothing more than corpses. But today I want to demonstrate to you that he rose from the dead just like he said. Amen? Amen. 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 You guessed it. That the title for today would be Just Like He Said. Amen? Amen. If you could, brother, give me Luke chapter 24. Verses 1 through 9. Amen. Amen. You know, when I was a kid, my, my sometimes my parents would tell me something about one of my siblings. And uh, they wouldn't believe me. And sometimes when, when I would take them back to mom or dad and they would confess what I had told them, I would look at them and say, I told you so. I told you so. 
It was just like I said. That's kind of where I came up with the title this morning. Uh, just like he said. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and read uh, Luke 24, verses 1 through 9. We're adjusting it. Okay. Some technical difficulties. <laughs> you struggle with that a little bit. My eyes get crossed sometimes when I see things moving. <laughs> I'm just going to move along. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not there. And I just say right there that sometimes we're looking for God in the wrong places. Amen. He's not there. Amen. 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 The Bible says, and it came to pass that they were perplexed there about. Behold, two men stood by them in charming garments as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee? Saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And the Bible says, and they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Amen. Amen. The best news that this world has ever heard, coincidentally, came from a cemetery. He is alive. Amen. Somebody ought to clap your hands on right. We couldn't be here today if he wasn't alive. He here's the story. You know what I read? the different gospels of the story and kind of put it into a perspective in my mind that I wanted to talk to, uh, to you about it this morning. It, it, it's not a, a, a normal sermon that I would give, but it's a view of everything that I read, and it's all biblical. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that following the Passover meal with his 12 disciples, Jesus of Nazareth is praying in the garden, Gethsemane, just outside the eastern walls of Jerusalem, his disciples slept as sweat drops of crimson blood began to drip from his brow. In agony, he cried, Father, if it's possible, let this pass from me. Amen. 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 God sent the FedEx back to Jesus and said, it's not possible. At which point Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? Amen. Can I just say all real and authentic living begins with the crucifixion of your will and the birth of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen? Amen. It's called the cross. Amen. John said, from the foundations of the earth, Meaning before Genesis 1 and 1. He went to his disciples while they were sleeping and looked at them and said, Could you not have prayed with me one hour? One hour. Just one hour is all he's asking for. They couldn't do it for one hour. The point here is the New Testament church at that point was sleeping already. Jesus was going through the greatest crisis of his life. And I think right now perhaps the New Testament church 
In America, it's sleeping while America is in a crisis. Amen? Amen. We're in a moral crisis. In an existence right now like I've never seen before. I'm only 60, but I've never seen the things taking place or heard about the things that are taking place right now. America and abroad is in turmoil. Amen. Amen. Suddenly there are 500 Roman soldiers coming toward Jesus from the Antitoian fortress. They surround the Lord of glory and the leader says, we seek Jesus. We're looking for the Christ. And Jesus answers in three words and says, I am he. Amen. Right. And they fell to the ground like dead men. Jesus says, no man takes my life. I lay it down. Amen. 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 Rome could not convict him. The cross could not conquer him. The grave could not contain him. And Satan could not defeat him. Why, Pastor? Why not? Because he was and is and always be the king of all kings and the Lord Amen. of all lords. The conqueror of death, hell, and the grave. Like your hands. Come on, get it. In Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus said, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Jesus is standing and Roman soldiers who were celebrating for their cruelty and their vicious capacity to butcher people are on the grounds trembling like children in the absolute fear, but totally powerless. He, Jesus, was and is the mighty conqueror. Amen. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Judas the deceiver. Judas the devil's advocate. Judas who was cherished by many more than his relationship with his master. He cherished that more. Peter slashed off the ear of a Roman soldier. Jesus is taken to Pilate and they tried him. He washed his hands and said, I find no fault in this man. According to Roman law, the trial should have ended right there. But it didn't. The Pharisees did not want justice. They wanted the life of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's what they were after. Yeah. And we're not going to stop until they had it. Right. He was then taken to Herod, whose men of war slapped him. They spit on him. They gave to him a crown of thorns. They ripped from his back, his back, the seamless robe that he had on. Then placed upon him the mockery of a scarlet robe. They said, Hail, King of the Jews. Then Jesus was sent back to Pilate a second time where he was beaten with a Roman cat and nine tails for 39 stripes. Amen. Amen. 39 stripes because that was the limit by Roman law that they could inflict on a man. Beyond that, it would have been human death. He would not have survived. It would have been a death sentence. So they stopped at 39. Listen. In the theaters of your mind right now. Just, just close your eyes. In the theaters of your mind. To the Roman whips. Which loosed and were loaded with lead. On the tips of those cattails. As it whistles through the air. It's almost like I can hear the whip coming. And the lead at the end of those cattails. Just hammering him from all directions. Seeing the crimson stream of blood. Flowing down his back. And stained the cobblestones that he knelt upon and walked upon. Hear the words, by his stripes we are healed. Amen. By his stripes we are yeah. healed. If you in this building are watching or maybe on Facebook today live. Or anywhere in the world. Your medical bill has been paid by Calvary. By Jesus Amen. Christ of Nazareth. Our healer is in the house today. He can heal any sickness, any disease, any circumstance today. Amen. 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 We ought to give him praise just because he's here and he's able. Is anything too hard for the Lord, the Bible says? Jesus then was sentenced to death by crucifixion. And on his back, bloody, was placed on him an old rugged cross. That he, dropped, that he dragged through the cobblestone streets of Jerusalem. 
Imagine, as the Jewish woman wept for him, he said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children and your children's children. Jesus looked prophetically down the scope of time, and he says, That is just 39 years, that in just 39 years later, the Romans under General Titus would besiege Jerusalem and more than a million Jewish people would die from starvation. It was just the beginning of a long trial and tears experienced by the Jewish people. The blood slopes of Calvary. Jesus Christ went where atheistic people couldn't go. He was nailed to the precious cross. His hands pierced. Amen. Scholars believe that on Friday, April the 3rd, in 333 A.D., at exactly 3 p.m. in the afternoon, Jesus bowed with his blood-soaked head adorned with crowns. Picture it. Picture it. And shouted in agony, it is finished. It is finished. Amen. Amen. What was finished, Pastor? What was finished? Tell me. The death and hell and the grave were finished. He had finished it. Amen. The power. Amen. The power of sin was finished forever and was a defeated foe was Satan. Amen. There was now forgiveness. There was even redemption and mercy with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the Lamb of God made a way for our redemption. Amen. Amen. He died for the sins of the world. The sin refused to shine. But Jesus became sin. Who knew no sin. Our sin was cast upon him. And he became the substitutionary scapegoat for all of sin. Amen. 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 Before sundown on this Sabbath. Which was Friday. The followers of Jesus took his blood-soaked body, blood-soaked body, down from the cross. They wrapped it in burial clothes with 75 to 100 pounds of spices and laid him in the, bur the, bar the borrowed tomb of Joseph. Amen. Amen. All night, Friday and Saturday night, the giver of life lay dead in a borrowed tomb. Demons rejoice. Satan rejoiced. That whom they feared was not dead. They were rejoicing. Politicians gloated. We've shut up the troublemaker from, G from Nazareth. He's been shut up. And we have totally conquered him. All his jabber about eternal kingdom was just blah, 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 blah. blah. It was nothing. His disciples scattered in terror. They were haunted by the memory of the blood-soaked corpse hanging from the cross. His mother Mary wept without consolation as the blood of her son dripped from the cross. What a sight that must be. Amen. Roman guards strutted and said, His tomb has a Roman seal. He will never come out of there. He's dead, and Rome has won again. Satan was strutting in the corridors of hell, laughing with spasms of demonic joy, saying, I have finally won from the garden and the snake I sent to deceive Adam and Eve until the garden of Gethsemane. Of Gethsemane. I have fought and now believe that he was the victor. He thought that he had won. Satan was saying, I won, I won, he is defeated. But death was still all powerful. The grave was still dark and gloomy, unconquered. Then came the morning of the third day. The third day being from Friday morning to Sunday morning. And on the third day rose up a dawn of hope. An angel swooped down from heaven to roll the stone away. Amen. The third day, the blinding flash of light in a massive earthquake took place, and the Roman soldiers fell to the ground, trembling in terror. Amen. 
Right. But on the third day, out of the darkness of the tomb, walked Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the Lord of glory, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Alpha, the Omega, the one who is in the end. The champion from the cross. Hallelujah. I cry right now because he did it all for us. Amen. Right. And because I've heard the voice of God in my sleep. I've heard it when I'm awake. He's real. He sent Amen. angels Amen. that appeared to me. He took time out of the day to do that for me. He spoke to me when I knew nothing about him. He spoke to me. I know he's real. Amen. Brother said this morning, I don't understand how some people just can't see it. I have saw it. I have felt it. I have heard it. Salvation don't come by seeing. It comes by hearing of the word. Amen. That's how salvation comes, the hearing of the word. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He has risen. He lives. Amen. He is alive. What does the res resurrection mean for us believers? It means that every claim Jesus ever made about himself is 100% absolutely true. Amen. It means there is eternal life to all believers that follow the plan of salvation found in Acts chapter 2. Amen. It means that he was not a lunatic like they said he was. Right. He said, if you destroy this temple, Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, I will raise it on the third day. Amen. Amen. Just like he said, Buddha's still in the grave. Muhammad is still in the grave. Our father Abraham is still in the grave. But the grave of Jesus of Nazareth right. is empty. Amen. It is empty. Amen. He arose just like he said. He's coming back just like he said. He will sit on the throne of his father David in the temple mount just like he said. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Just like he said. Amen. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is from John chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He's not a liar. If he said it, it's true. Amen. Just like he said. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. A prepare a place for you, Brother Kenny. For you, Brother David. For you, Brother Cook. Brother Howard. Sister Angie. Sister Lynette. And Sister Gabby. He said, I'm going to prepare a yeah. place for you. And you and you and me and everyone. Amen. 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 In John chapter 14, verse 3. He said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. That, my friends, is the guarantee of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Give him a hand clap of praise right now. It's a promise. It's a promise that he made. He cannot lie. The angels rolled the stone away. And it was not to let Jesus out, but to let us in. Amen. Amen. The empty tomb is the only attraction on the face of the earth where people can line up for blocks and miles to see nothing because there's nothing in that tomb right. anymore. Amen. Amen. Because he lives. Because he lives. Yes. Because yes. he lives. Amen. 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 The resurrection means that Satan and all his defeated superstructures are totally destroyed. Amen. 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 Give me Ephesians yes. chapter 6 verse 12, brother. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Say amen when you get it out there. Amen. 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 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen? Amen. Amen. Principalities against rulers of darkness, it said, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And as a saved believer, we have the keys to the kingdom. You know what keys represent? Authority that's been given to us. We have authority over powers and principalities and darkness. You have enough spiritual firepower that when you speak or even roll over in your bed, every demon in Sandusky County, Seneca County, in this area should be shaken and full of fear. Amen. We have authority over the world. We have authority over the flesh. And we have authority over the adversary. Do not be intimidated by the devil, evil, or evil people. You are a child of the living God, child of the rejected king, and you have the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. He gave us the spirit of peace. You should not be tormented by depression or anxiety or any other spirit or addiction. For in his presence, the Bible says, there is fullness of joy. In Psalms 118, it says, this is the day which the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Amen. But pastor, you don't know what I've been going through. Pastor, you don't know where I'm trying to come out of. The Bible says just rejoice and be glad in it. For crying out loud, can we just see and do that and see what happens? Amen. Just rejoice. Yes. Amen. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Did you hear that? A shadow. A shadow of death. The shadow of a lion cannot bite you. Right. Because it's just a shadow. The sword cannot cut you. Because it's just a shadow of the sword. And the snake cannot harm you. Because it's harmless. It's just a shadow. Amen. Jesus yeah. defeated death at the cross. That is nothing but a shadow. When you walk through it, you do it with a victor's crown. Amen? Amen. Not a victim, a victor's crown. Yeah. The angels asked the followers of Jesus at the tomb, do you remember what he said? He said, do you remember what he said? Jesus referring to, do you remember what he said? Why seek ye the living among the dead? The angel said, he told you that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And he told you on the third day he would rise again. And they remembered all these things. Sometimes we forget the price that he paid. Sometimes we can't remember what he did for us. Right. Get this, for three days they had been feeling defeated delusional, weeping, but only if they had remembered what Jesus said. Before a resurrection, there must be a crucifixion. Amen. Before there is a sunrise, there must be a night. Before there is a victory, there must be a fight. And before there is a crown, there has to be a cross. And before there is a purchase, there has to be a cost. Do you remember what he said? In times of stress, we forget the sweet promises of God. How sweet life could be if we could only remember what he said. Amen. 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 Do you feel lonely? Do you feel rejected? Do you feel abandoned at times? Do you feel like the whole world has maybe chewed you up and spit you out? You feel like that sometimes? Do you remember what he said? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, right. even to the ends of the earth. If you 
mothers and fathers forsake if your mother and fathers forsake you I will lift you up give him a hand clap Amen. he's never going to leave you he's never going to forsake you our father is laying streets of gold as we speak and we can manage here the best we can manage here is an asphalt surface but there's gold streets waiting for us and I know that some people may be thinking, well, when I get there, I'm going to start to chip it all up and put it in my pocket and say, you won't have to do that because the gold's going to be everywhere. There's plenty. Amen. Amen. Jesus is your provider. Amen. 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 He provided here and he shall provide there. We can't forget that. In Philippians 4, verse 19, it says, but my God shall supply all your needs, not some of them, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Do you feel defeated? Do you remember what he said? He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. We are more than conquerors through Christ. We are the victors, not the victims. Because of Calvary, the royal blood of heaven is flowing in your veins. My veins, everyone's veins, amen? Let God arise and let our enemies be scattered, amen? amen. Fight the good fight, run the race to win. The victory is ours. I'm looking at the winners. It's you and me and everyone watching out there in Facebook or YouTube this morning, amen? He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, the sins, be forgiven thee. That not be not afraid. I am he who was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. The resurrection story is the story of faith over failure. It's a story on how to turn your worst day into the best day. Amen. Amen. For a hundred years, Good Friday was called Black Friday because Jesus Christ, the giver of life, was dead. The healer was being called a heretic. The deliverer was said to be a demonized deceiver. The great shepherd of the sheep was in a great scandal. The Lord of glory was to be called by the state a lunatic and a liar. The resume of Jesus' ministry looks horrible when you look at that that way. You couldn't get a church resume started with that. It was indeed a Black Friday. It was to be the worst day ever. But the black clouds were boiling and the ground shook with an earthquake. Dead men walked out of their graves. The veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. <clears throat> removing the barrier that was between men and God. You need, and you need to hear everyone today, could now come boldly unto the presence of God and make your petitions. No, unto him you can do that now. Hallelujah. He made a way for Amen. us to come to the altar. To come to the holy of holy. To your potential. You know, in that day in the old tabernacle plan, only one person per year, the high priest was allowed to enter into the tabernacle. But because the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, he's made a way for every one of you in here today to come to the altar. Amen. He made a way for every one of you to be in his presence. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The choice is yours. Simply walk up to here and say, Lord, I've got to do something. Amen. I want to come through the veil that's been opened up to me. I'm coming in for the opportunity that you gave us on the cross. I want to reach where the fire from heaven comes down and consumes. Amen. 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 All because he was raised up in the temple on the third day. Just like he said. Amen? Amen. Here it is. When Jesus was hanging from a Roman cross, caked in blood, naked in shame and disgrace, the high priest was mocking him, saying, If thou beest the Son of God, save yourself. The fact is, he could not save you and save himself. That's a fact. He couldn't have done it that way. What good would it have done for, to save himself? And then we wouldn't have remission for sin. We wouldn't have mercy and grace. Amen. So he died. He died for every person in this room, for every person watching online, for every person in the world. In agony, Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He died, and it was a bad day, it seemed. Amen? Amen. It was a bad day also for Joseph when he was sold into slavery. 
Not just one brother being angry at you, but imagine 11 brothers all being angry at you. It looked like a bad day. Joseph was sold into slavery a second time into a slave market in Egypt. The woman of the man who bought him falsely accused him of rape. He went to prison for 10 years for something that he didn't do. Amen. The comforters from that time who comfort came to him and said, if you were really serving the Lord, this would have never happened to you. He had years of reversal at his mercy. And in every verse, when you read that chapter, it always said, but God was with him. But God was with him. Amen. When that happened, but God was with him. Amen. Whatever you're going through, but God is with you. Amen. 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 They paint whatever crisis they want to. It doesn't matter if it's sickness that you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in a, a dilemma that you don't think you can get out of or a situation or a circumstance uh, or even heartbreak. I'm telling you, God is with you. Amen. 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 In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. He's leading you to an opportunity that's bigger than the one that you can even possibly dream. Amen. If he tells you to go fishing for Moby Dick, you better take your tartar sauce because it's going to be a big catch. Hallelujah. Amen. When you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Amen. Right. Because he is risen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. If there's any scriptures, I'll grab them here. Come on up. I was asking myself this morning, what changed the life of the disciples from cowards who ran from the cross to hide from the Romans to make them lions of God? What changed them? What was it that happened or took place? Peter cursed and denied Jesus before an 18-year-old girl. Peter, who just a few hours before, just a few hours before, looked at Jesus and said, I'll die for you, Lord. And these other guys, they may quit on you, but I'll die for you. This little 18-year-old girl said, you're a Galilean. And Peter said, I don't know that man. He melted like wax. Just like that. When he said that he would die for him. That he wouldn't be like the others who brought him to the fire. He melted like wax. Thomas was calling CNN and Fox the news to expose Jesus as a fraud. Using a little bit of today's terminology. He said, I'm not going to believe unless I can touch the scars in his hands. Thomas doubted him to the end. After three and a half years of seeing miracles, signs, and wonders, he doubted. James, the brother of Jesus, who did not follow Jesus while he was alive, was willing to die a martyr. Why follow these twelve? They were crucified upside down. Some were beheaded, some were boiled in oil, exiled, fed to the lions. Nero wrapped the, the Christians in oily rags and burned them alive in his rose garden. You know, they went from cowards to lions because they saw the resurrection of Christ. Amen. 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 
They talked with him after the resurrection. They ate with him. They slept with him. They saw him ascending only because he had risen. Just like he said. Amen. 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 Just going to read a few scriptures to you. You just got to understand that everything that Jesus said is going to happen. That's right. That's right. There's nothing that hasn't happened that he said. Amen. We're living in an end time right now where things are unfolding. You know, 50 years ago, you could have said, well, this has got to happen and that's got to. No, it's happened. We're there. Yeah. We're only here because he granted us a breath today. The Bible says he's coming as a thief in the night. That no man knows the hour nor the day. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've never had a thief call me and say, I'm coming. Right. We're not going to know it. Right. In the twinkling of an eye. will be raptured up. Right. Just like he said. He said in Matthew 24, verse 42, this is the chapter where he's talking about the end time. He said, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. He said, watch, watch. Sometimes we're too caught up in our worldly lives and can't see. When Jesus healed the blind, he didn't just heal them physically. He opened their eyes spiritually so that they could see things that were coming. He said, watch. You know not what hour your Lord doth come. Again in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, he said, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. I give every man according to his works. In 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7 he said but the end of all things is at hand. Before, be ye therefore sober and watch Amen. unto prayer. You know, when I began a prayer life, God began to speak to me. And I was amazed and marveled. And I'm just an ignorant, dumb guy when you look at things spiritually. I didn't know anything. But when I began a relationship with him, just to talk to him, I began to hear his voice. He began to reveal himself to me. You want to know how bad it was? When the Lord first spoke to me and I heard his voice audibly, I was scared to go to my wife and tell her. I heard the voice of God today. I was scared. You know why I was scared? Because I thought my wife was going to think, you're losing it. I haven't lost nothing. I've been increased. The devil had me thinking I couldn't tell her. She was going to say, you done went off the, the end. And I hid it from her for almost two months. But God was dealing with me. And he was maturing me. And I was beginning to hear him conversing with me. We have conversations. Do you know he would answer my questions before I could even finish the question? The answer would come. Right. <laughs> He knew what I was going to ask. Right. It amazed me. Finally, I shared it with my wife. I was no longer ashamed because I knew what I heard. Some relationships with God are just started with a few simple words. You know what mine were? I was sick in bed. I couldn't walk. Crippled. No life. Progressively got worse and worse. Pain excruciating. Couldn't feed myself. Couldn't bathe myself. I couldn't even get up to use a restroom. 
I couldn't even bring the fork or a spoon to my mouth. But God knew that he needed to take me to a place like a dead end where there'd be no other place to look except up to him. I did believe, but that's all I knew. It was just to believe. And I cried out to him that day. That's all I said. I said, Lord, if you're real, and you heal me of this crippling disease, I promise you, I will serve you the rest of my life. Because we serve a God that's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, he looked down the road, and he knew the promise that I had made to him, Amen. that I was going to keep Amen. it. I was tired of living the way I was living. There was something missing. It wasn't the same after my conversion. If you ask my wife, did he love you before he came to God? She'd say, yeah. But if you asked her after I came to Christ and became transformed, she said, oh my God, what a difference. What an incredible difference. The love that I had for my wife was nothing compared after the transformation took place. The Bible says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Husbands, if you're not loving your wives, and you're not loving God. But if you can get God first, your wife will trust you. She'll follow you. She'll believe in you. And she'll back you up. Because you sit and sup with the Lord. Amen. Amen. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 11, he said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. I believe that was the enemy. 
I think he don't want me to speak what I'm about to speak. But every word written in this Bible is true. Yes. He made a way for us. He'll never force us to take that road. Because he gave us, he gave us the, the opportunity to have free will to choose him. That's right. I chose him. I chose to live righteously. I wanted to walk circumspectly. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18, it says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, scarcely the righteous, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. That's right. Amen. Amen. The altar is open. I just want to thank God for making a way for you. I just want a simple little prayer to him. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you need a deliverance. Maybe you want to feel a love from someplace else that you've never felt before. I've met some women of God that said that Jesus held them. They could feel his physical presence. Today's the day that he'll be a revelator to you. Maybe you'll hear a voice, a small, still voice. Because he is alive. And he is coming back. Just like he said. Amen. 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 God bless you all this Easter. Happy Resurrection Day.
God's way. We're born on that. We're walking that path every day of our life until we decide to stop get off of that path and get on the straight and narrow. Repentance is kind of like swimming upstream. Walking the broad and narrow, the broad and wide way is kind of like floating downstream. There is no effort required. You just float down there. But when you make a turn, live for God, it's like swimming upstream. Anybody ever tried to swim upstream? It requires some effort. So Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's not hard to live for God. It's easy. You just got to be willing to do it. Jesus, when he prayed in the garden, he said, Not my will be done, but thy will be done. We got to will. Thank you. 
you otherwise. That's not God talking. That's the enemy saying, you can't do this. I know there's a battle going on in your mind right now. Don't let the devil speak in your ear and convince you that you don't need this. Or that there's always tomorrow. You can't be born again laying on your deathbed. Everybody find a place to pray right now.